Hello and welcome. This lab we will be performing an Atterberg limit test. This is used to determine the liquid and plastic limits of cohesive soils to get the plasticity of that soil, which allows us to classify it based on how moisture affects it. This test covers standards ASTM D4318 and ASHTO T89 and T90. We will need the following items to perform this test. Sample containers, a number 40 sieve, mixing dish, mortar and pedestal, spatula, squeeze bottle with distilled water, a glass plate, a balance, a Casa Grande liquid limit device with grooving tools and an oven. The first thing we need to do is to prepare the soil. For this test, we will be using a lean clay. There are a couple of ways to do that. If the material is finer than a number 40 sieve, then you can use the moist material as a starting point for your test. If it has material larger than a number 40 sieve, then you have to dry it out in an oven at 110 degrees C first to be able to grind it down with a mortar and pedestal to the proper gradation. Once the material is prepared, and is in the mixing dish, we are ready to start. We will have to perform both the plastic and the liquid limit test. We will use the same sample for both, but at different moisture contents. We will wet the sample up to what we consider to be close to the plastic limit of the soil, and then remove a portion of that sample to perform that test. Then we will wet the remaining portion of the sample to about the starting point for the liquid limit test and set it aside. Then we will roll out our plastic limit samples on a glass plate. This is done to draw the moisture out of the sample until it hits its plastic limit. We will continue to roll the sample out to an eighth of an inch diameter until we can no longer get to that point before the sample starts to break up. When we can no longer get a worm that is an eighth of an inch thick and at least one inch is long, we have hit our plastic limit. We will then place a sample in the drying tin 
and get a weight and place it in the oven. We will do this a minimum of two samples to make sure we are consistent. Next, we will move on to our liquid limit portion of the test. We will do this by using a Casa Grande device and a grooving tool. There are two types of grooving tools. One is for stiff materials, the other is for soft. I typically use a stiff material tool for all of my tests. The two tools are set up to maintain the proper height of the material in the testing device. It will also give you a standard groove width. Before we start, we need to make sure that the Casa Grande device is calibrated for the proper drop height. We do this by using the back of the grooving tool to make sure it is calibrated by sliding it underneath the cup and making sure the lifting mechanism barely touches the cup. Once it is set, then we can place material into the cup. The material should be placed so that the depth is the same as the grooving tool. To change from that will either cause it to come together slower or quicker depending on the amount of material. We will then put the groove in the sample. If it is stiff, it may take several passes where you can do it in one pass if the material is soft. At this point, we are ready to drop the cup onto the base and see how many drops it takes for one inch of the material to flow together. We will then cut a sample out where the material came together, put it in a drying tin, get a weight, and put it in the oven to dry. We need a minimum of three samples, but four would be better. These samples will be based on the number of blows it takes for the material to flow together. We, we would, would like, like to see two samples greater than 25 blows and two samples less than 25 blows. Ideally, all of them will be between 10 and 40 blows. After the samples are dried, cooled, and weighed, we will plot a line for the liquid limit. Where it crosses the 25 blow line is the liquid limit of this material. Then we will take the average of the plastic limit samples to get the plastic limit. We will take the liquid limit minus the plastic limit to get the plasticity index and plot that against the liquid limit to classify the soil type on the plasticity chart lab. For additional information, please refer to the student lab manual and get help from your TAs.